in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need to move your spirit. We need you to work in this situation today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want you to bless everyone under the sound of my voice this morning. Lord, we need your grace today. We just need your touch today, Lord. Somebody is standing in the need of a blessing. Somebody needs healing this morning. Somebody needs deliverance on this morning, Lord. Stop by here today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, there's none like you nowhere. And we come to praise you today, Lord. We want you, oh God, to look on us today, Lord. Look on us today, Lord, where we may stand in our situation, Lord. Where we are today, Lord. In this place today, Lord. Come in the room today in the name of Jesus move like never before Lord and oh God we ask you you look on everyone under the sound of my voice today Lord somebody needs homes today Lord looking for blessing Lord looking for healing looking just for a touch from you today Lord Lord we don't get look on the sick and afflicted today those that are in the hospital rooms this morning those that are in the convalescent centers those that are on their beds of affliction move in a special way today Lord in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oh God bless every auxiliary that's assembled here on today Lord oh God look on this pastor today as he traveled today, Lord. Bless him in a special way today. In the name of Jesus, and protect him from her harm and danger. Oh God, we pray a special blessing for the first lady today. Bless him in a special way today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God, we know that you're not a respecter of person. Oh God, we ask you to look on the ushers today. Look on the choir members today, Lord. Look on the orchestra on this morning. In the of Jesus. Oh God, look on the mother today, the missionaries today, Lord. All the late members today, Lord. Somebody needs a blessing today. Somebody needs a healing today. Somebody just needs a word from you today, Lord. Send your word today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, move in this place, Lord. Miracles today, Lord. Rain down on us today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, look on our situation. Lord. Look on our household today, Lord. And oh God, bless our neighbors today, Lord. In a special way today, Lord. We know that you can and we know that you will, Lord. You never lost a case, Lord. Oh God, we're resting upon your word. We're resting on your will today, Lord. Stop by here today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God, those that are even home huh, that could not make it on this morning, Lord. Those that are listening by way of Facebook and Zoom today, Lord, and other methods today, Lord. We pray that the blessing today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord God. And we know, God, through all things that we'll receive blessing, we'll receive miracles in your name, Lord. Bless us today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, oh, God, we prepare to close out this this prayer on this morning, Lord. We ask your special blessing, Lord, for those that have spent prayer requests today, Lord, those that are praying for family members. Oh, God, pray. we bless, we want you to bless the bereaved this morning, Lord. Help them today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, those that have special prayer requests, we want you to honor today, Lord. Those with doctor's appointments today, Lord, we want you to honor today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, send your word, send your healing today, Lord. And oh God, we will be blessed in thy name. Lord, and let us just say before this moment, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Come on, all over the building, thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. I need to hear this morning. Thank you, Jesus. And God has never done anything for you today. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, Lord. And oh God, and this time we thank you for this morning. We ask you to remain standing. Amen. Missionary Wilbur is coming on this morning. Amen. Thank God for her. Say amen for her as she comes with the scripture on this morning. And after Missionary Wilbur, you will be in the hand of the praise team. Say amen in that order. God bless you.
Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. She just read the scripture that declares, for the Lord is good. Yes. His mercy is everlasting. Yes. And his truth endures to all generations. Mama. I don't know if you realize it today, but praising God has great value. Yes. What do you mean, Sister Riley? I mean, praising God, your praise has great value. It has such great value to Jesus' see. If these would but hold their peace. The rocks will cry out. So I want you to realize today, God will be praised yes. whether you praise him or not. Yes. But I've made the conscious choice, Sister Mosley, yes. that a rock will never have to cry out in my place. Yes. I have made the conscious choice to praise and magnify the Almighty God. Oh, yes. So we ask you and we invite you to stand on your own feet. To give your own praise, even as we sing this song that everybody knows. Come on and let's just praise him. Is that all right? Put your hands together and let's praise him.
one like this one. Yeah, yeah. I thought about when, I, when Isaiah, when he came into the presence of the Lord, yeah. how he, he realized that he was undone. Yeah. Because he, he, when he got the, a glimpse of glory, he was able to see that they just said, holy, yeah. holy. Yeah. I want you to know just how holy God yeah. is. Yeah. All right, we're going to sing one more song. We just ask that you join in with us. It's a simple song. Once you hear it a couple of times, you'll be able to pick it up.
Hallelujah. Oh, somebody ought to felt that on this morning. I, I believe other than me, somebody else ought to felt that on this morning. You know, we're, we're in the midst of a, of a moment right now. How many, has God done anything for you? How we praise you. I heard the writer say, how we praise you. Or oh, how we worship. Is there any worshipers in the house this morning? Is there any praisers in the house this morning? Oh, I wish I had some help on today. If God has done anything for you this morning, I just want you to rest upon your feet. If God's done anything for you on this morning, I want you to rest upon your feet. I want you to bring us, help us and usher in a moment of praise, a moment of thanksgiving. That's it, God, that's it, that's it, I, I, that's it, I see God moving in the room. Before we bring the speaker on this morning, I just want you to just take, a, take about five seconds and give God some praise. Let God know that he is worthy today. He's worthy of the praise. Oh, oh, how I worship you today, Lord. Oh, how they cut your little little shut up. Oh, how I praise you today. Oh, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Hey, come on, come on. Come on, I want to do it. Somebody else ought to be feeling this this morning. Oh, you're right, man. Lord, I praise you. Oh, do you love it this morning? Come on, I can feel it. I can feel it this morning. I can feel it. this morning. I see God saying, listen, your troubles and your trials are all over. I want you to just lay them down this morning. In, in, in spite of what you're thinking, in spite of your situations, I, I know you've had some troubles. I know you've had some trials. But I hear God speaking this morning. He's speaking to somebody right here this morning. He's speaking on the left side of this room. He's saying, listen, I know you're going through some difficult times. I, I know you had some trials. I know you need relief this morning, but I come to give you relief this morning like never before. I'm going to give you a breakthrough. I'm going to move the chains. I'm going to move in a special way. I know you've been sick. I know you've been going through. But I come to give you power. I come to give you healing this morning. Woo! I come to praise you. I come to lift you up. That's it. That's it. I feel it in the room. Oh, I see it. Lord, we praise you this morning. Come on and just clap your way out of it. You know, just you can praise your way out of this thing. Come on, clap your way out of it this morning. Give him a praise offering this morning. He's worthy of the praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for my job. I thank you for the house that you've given me today, Lord. Lord God, I thank you for salvation. Lord, I remember one time I was walking, but you've given me a car, Lord. I didn't know how I was going to do it today, Lord. I had bills that need to be paid. Didn't know how I was going to do it, Lord. But I just got up one morning and you had a check in the mailbox. I praise you today. I magnify you today, Lord. Just because the government said you couldn't do it. You made a way out of no way. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, all over the world, the building, give him a praise on this morning. We say to thank God for you today. Thank God for his miracles. Thank God for his wonders on this morning. Say amen for the Lord on this morning. I would be that you would continue to stand for a moment as we bring our speaker before you. Speaker happens not to be a stranger in this place. Amen. I know she has a divine word on this morning. I want you to look this way. And say, God bless. 
the missionary evangelist Valerie Elaine Fox Riley. Say amen as she comes to you in our very own way. God bless you on this morning, evangelist. Hallelujah. refuse to raise our hands in praise and worship to the God who gave me the activities of my limbs, to the God who gave me life on this morning, God, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so good. You kept the robber at bay. You didn't let him come into my home. You kept the gunman at bay. You didn't let him gun me down when I went to the supermarket. You didn't let him gun me down, God, when I went to the mall, hallelujah. We just want to say thank you, God. Thank you for your mercy and your grace toward us. We realize that it's because you were so good. It's not because we've been so good, but God, but God, it's because you're so good. Now, God, as we stand before such a great people, we realize our insufficiencies. So, God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to use us. To use my mouth, God, to use my hands, to use my ears that you speak to me as you speak to your people in the name of Jesus. I don't want to say anything that you don't give me to say, but I ask in the name of Jesus that you would give me the anointing that makes this easy in the name of Jesus. Now, God, give your people ears to hear and hearts to receive. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I honor God for being here. I give honor to the pastor in his absence. He is on the highway again traveling, and we thank God for his traveling mercy because I think the last three, two to three weeks, he has been back and forth over the dangerous highways, and God has blessed him and given him traveling mercy. Didn't even have as much as a flat tire. So we praise God for that. And it's not because your cards are so good that you are, you are able to travel back and forth, but it's because God is so good. So we thank God for his mercy and his grace toward us on this morning. We don't want to delay the time. I want to go quickly to, um, oh, I also give honor to Elder Green and to all of our missionaries and mothers, to all of God's people who are here on today. Thank God for each and every one of you. When I was a child, we played a game that I later would know is called Blind Man's Bluff. Right. As, a as a disclaimer, there are many variations of this game. So if we didn't play it like you played it, it's all good. We all had fun. But the official rules of the game went like this. To play the standard game of Blind Man's Bluff, one player is blindfolded and then disoriented by being spun around several times. The other players who are not blindfolded amuse themselves by calling out to the blind man and dodging away from him. Sometimes we would tap each other on the shoulder while the blind man would try to embrace us, would try to catch us. And if the blind man was able to catch us, he had to guess who we were. He had to guess who that person was. And if he could guess who that person was, he was able to come out of the circle and he would receive his sight while the other person became the blind man. So if you will allow me today, I'm going to, for the sake of emphasis, I want to illustrate how the game went. I'm going to call a couple of people to help me if you don't mind. Come on, uh, Cajun Eat, Brittany. Yeah, right. Come on, Carmen. All right. Where is Brittany? In the souls. Oh, here she is. All right. Come on, Christian. Now we're gonna put um, we're gonna put Brittany in the middle. Now she probably can't take. I'm turning around. 
Okay. If she like me. Oh, you can? Okay, sorry. Right. Let's, let's put her in. She's going to be the blind man for today. All right. I want to turn this up a little. A hairstyle. <laughs> so we would, I want y'all to form a circle around her. All right. All right. I probably called the wrong one up here. She already said it, Brittany, you going down. We would stretch out. And so the person in the middle, this is the blind man. So this person would have to turn around several times. Stop. Now she knows where I am because I have the mic. But she doesn't know where anybody else is. So different people would touch her on the shoulder and she would try to get them while they were ducking and God. Can you try to do that, please? Try to catch one of them. Now. No, she went around. Try to catch somebody, baby. Try to, try to catch somebody. Yeah, there you go. See how she has to grow? And they would be laughing, and, and she was just trying to find somebody while we were all laughing. We would be moving, and sometimes we would catch it to call out and say, here I am. Oh, these are some sad players right here. <laughs> we would say, here I am, and she would try to get us, but she couldn't get us, you know, because we would run, and we had a lot of fun as children. You know, the children today, they don't, they don't play outside. They just stay in the house and, and play um, on the video game, hence all of the diabetes and other uh, ailments that we have. Wow. But she couldn't see anything. And I want you to notice something. She was groping for them, trying to find someone trying to touch someone. That's what I want you to see today. All right, thank y'all. Come get this out of my curls, baby. So now I want to tell you why we played this game. These are the things I want you to know. Number one, the person in the middle was totally blind. She couldn't see anything. Number two, the person in the middle could hear the voice of the players had they done what I told them to do. Well. <laughs> the person in the middle had some decisions to make. The decisions had met, that she made determined whether she won or lost the game. I chose this game because it relays, it helps me to relay numerous spiritual points today, spiritual truths today. In this game that we live, we call it life. And many of us are blindfolded. We're blindfolded because we don't know what tomorrow holds. As a matter of fact, we don't even know what the next five minutes holds. We're just living this life and we're playing the game called life. So we have some decisions that we have to make. We, we try to do different things and we don't know. Sometimes we're, it's like we're groping in the dark. If you notice, she kept feeling for someone. And, 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 and I have to stop right here because I want to say this. Somebody is groping in the dark today. And Jesus is calling out to you. He's saying to you, here I am. But you won't come to him. He's saying to you, I'm in this direction. You see, the difference is when Jesus is playing this game with us, he's trying to get, guide us through the game. He's telling us this is the way that you need to go. He's not hiding from us. But many of us choose to continue to grope in the dark rather than come to Jesus. We would rather figure this game out all on our own when he's telling us if you just go straight, you'll find what you're looking for. If you just turn to the right, there's what you're looking for. If you just turn to the left, he's telling us and he's giving us all the rules of the game. But we say, no, Lord, I don't want you to be a player in my game. I just want to figure this thing out on my own. I want you to turn to our text for today. Turn to Judges 16, 1 through 5, and 16 through 21. In the spirit of what our pastor has been uh, starting us to do, I'm going to ask you to stand and read. Mm -hmm. All right. And it reads, Then went Samson to Gaza. I want y'all to 
y'all to read with me. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot and went in to her. Verse 2, and it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all night, saying, in the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. Yeah. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron, verse four. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the city of Sore, whose name was Delilah. Mm -hmm. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may blind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. Verse 16. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he had showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, to the, she said the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. Last verse. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters and brass. And he did grind in the prison house. You may be seated. I ask that you repeat this subject after me. Discernment for daily decisions. Again, discernment for daily decisions. You know, discernment has been my word of the year. I have been seeking God for discernment. I chose this word because I say, God, I deal with a lot of people. I um, am asked for a lot of advice. I have a lot of decisions that I need to make, so I need discernment in my everyday life. So let's look at what is discernment. The simplest definition for discernment is the ability to judge well. However, we know that words have more than one meaning. Discernment in the spiritual or Christian context means the process of determining God's desire in a situation or for one's life or identifying the true nature of a thing. Anybody in here want discernment? I want to tell you again what discernment is in the spiritual context. Discernment in the spiritual context means the process of, discerning, of determining God's desire in a situation or for one's life or identifying the true nature of a thing. See, I want to know what the Lord's will is for my life. 
And as I deal with people and things on a daily basis, I need to know, I need to be able to identify the true nature of the thing. So I need discernment. In the process of Christian spiritual discernment, God guides the individual to help them arrive at the best decision. The way to arrive at the best decision in Christian spiritual discernment is to seek out internal and external signs of God's action and then apply them to the decision at hand. So what do you mean by that? Now listen, I, I don't have a hoop, y'all know I don't have a holler. Sometimes I get a little excited, but sometimes we just need to calm down and we need to be taught. We need discernment for daily decisions. I think that many issues that we have in our life today is because we have no discernment. And so I, I, I come to you today trying to help you with discernment. So if you will, just, just take out some paper and pencil. Jot down a few notes so that you can see what you can do to have discernment and begin to pray that God will give you discernment. You know, back some time ago, they came up with what would Jesus do? And so that was really an attempt to help you discern your, your, your situations. What do you need to do in a certain situation where you were supposed to just stand back and ask, what would Jesus do? Now, while that was good in principle, the problem with that is this. Many people don't know what Jesus would do. You know why they don't know what he would do? Because they don't know him. They don't have a personal relationship with him. They don't read the Bible the way that they should. So that asking WWJD, what would Jesus do? They had no earthly idea what Jesus would do. And so I come today to talk about discernment, what it is and why we need discernment. It is estimated that we make 35,000 decisions in a day. 35,000 decisions. And some of those decisions are as simple as, what will I eat for breakfast? What will I wear today? Now, I don't expect you to, you know, to go on your knees and say, Lord, what do you want me to eat for breakfast? Lord, should I wear this blue blouse or this black blouse? No, we don't trivialize discernment. We don't trivialize those things. But some of the decisions that we have to make on a daily basis have lasting repercussions. Sometimes we need to know, is this the person that you have for me? Is this the job that I need to take? You know, sometimes we are offered a better job, sometimes we're offered a new job, sometimes, and, and, and we like, we're like, oh yes, I'm gonna get a $10,000 raise, I'm gonna get a $15,000 raise, but I've always taught my children, all money, just allow me to say, ain't good money. Because if it's a, if, because if it's a job that causes you to compromise your principles, it's not a good fit for you. So in those situations, we must ask God what it is you need me to do. How would you have me to act in this situation? The Bible says in Proverbs 3 and 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Now y'all know I tell y'all all the time that God is a perfect gentleman. He will not bombard his way into your life. He will not force you to do anything. He has given us free will. And because he has given us free will, we have free will to make the decisions of this life in this game we call life. But he has given us some directions. He has given us some instructions. And he put those instructions in a book. And that book is called the Bible. Now man has tried to trivialize the Bible. They have told us all kinds of things like, oh, uh, the man wrote the book. Uh, the, this is a book that, that was written by man like any other book. But we know that the Bible was given in, under inspiration, under inspiration of God. How many of you have had an encounter with the word of God? You have read those promises and you've talked to God about those promises and you've experienced those promises. We said to God, Lord, you said in your word that you are a healer. And so I'm asking you to heal my child. I'm asking you to heal my body. So many times I've had to take the word of God 
to apply to my life and I've seen how it worked. I can remember when I had so much trouble with um, thyroid, my thyroid condition. And every time I would go back to the doctor, they would say it's still off. But what you don't realize is that your thyroid, though it's a tiny gland, it controls so many parts of your body, it controls your metabolism, which means if it's the wrong way, you could gain a lot of weight. And if it's, uh, if it's hyper, you, you lose a lot of weight. If it's hypo, you gain a lot of weight. Not only that, but it controls your, um, it controls how much energy you have. It controls all kinds of things. It's like your body's thermometer. So every time I would go to the doctor and it would be off, they would adjust my medication. But every time they adjust my medication, that means I was gaining weight. When I was pregnant with Lanaire, I was gaining about five pounds a week because they could not get my thyroid under, condition, under control. And so I, we began to pray and I began to ask God because I couldn't see how I could make it. I've got to, I've got to go 37 weeks, 37 and a half weeks, I believe it is, 39 and a half, I forgot what it is. I think it's 39 and a half. And how can I make it joining five pounds, gaining five pounds every week? So I can remember at the different times that I have struggled with it, which hasn't been much, God has been good to me because I've heard the horror stories of people who suffer with hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism. But I can remember one time I began to read God's word and I began to talk to my body and I began to command my body to align itself with the word of God because you see the Bible says that we were healed by his stripes. It says by whose stripes we were healed. Let me know that at the cross I was already healed. So the Bible told me that I was healed. God's word told me that I was healed. So I began to tell my body. I need you to do what the word of God says. I need you to align yourself with God's word. I need the thyroid, my TSH, my thyroid stimulating hormone, to align itself with God's word. And I kept applying the scripture to God's word. That's why can't nobody tell me that this is just another book. Because as I began to apply God's word and command my body to align with God's word, God, I'm going to tell y'all something. God is so good. I would go back after a couple of times and my thyroid level would be where it's supposed to be. I'm talking about the God who heals. I'm talking about that word that is alive and it's active and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. So this is the word that I'm talking about. Now the world will tell you that experience is your best teacher. And that works when it comes down to don't touch the hot stove. You know, you've been burned one time, you don't want to do that again. That'll work when it comes to sticking the, uh, the spoon into the, the uh, electrical socket. You don't want to do that again. But I came to tell you today that experience is not always your best teacher. I came to tell you today that the Holy Ghost is your best teacher. The Spirit of God is your best teacher. So we need to ask him, Lord, give me discernment. Lord, talk to me throughout the day. Tell me what decisions I need to make. You need to give him full access to you. You see, some of us are too busy for God to have access. We're doing everything and anything. And when it comes down to the things of God, we don't have time. That's why God has to send somebody to tell us, hey, this is what I'm saying to you because he's been trying to talk to you and you haven't been listening. You've been too busy. With, you've been too busy occasionally focusing on yourself. But God wants you to focus on him sometime. He wants you to, to get your Bible and he wants you to sit down and commune with him in your word. He wants you not just reading it and not just going to your knees and saying, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. But he wants you to talk to him and he wants you to take time to let him talk to you. He wants to have a real relationship with you. You know, sometimes we, we seek a relationship with somebody else and we say, you know what, I know that he loves me because he comes to see me all the time. I know that he loves me because he talks on the phone. We're texting all the time. So you look at the person's actions and that's how God knows some of us really don't love him. We don't talk to him. We don't come to see him. We don't, we don't spend time in his word. We don't spend time fasting and praying. We are too busy focusing on ourselves. But God is saying, I want to help you as you're going through life and you're groping in the darkness. 
not knowing what to say and what to do on any given situation. Why do we need discernment? We need discernment for our families. How many of you got somebody in your family who you've been praying for? You got somebody in your family you've been asking God to save. Somebody in your family who won't pay God any attention so you have to go before the throne for your family. We need discernment and how to deal with them because you see, sometimes you want to deal with them in a rough way. But God is saying, no, it's with loving kindness that I've drawn them. I need you to show them the love of God. So we need discernment for our families. We need discernment in our finances. Amen. You know, we, yes, I, I've, I've heard all the uproar about paying your tithes, about how it's under the law. But I want y'all to take some notes today. Let me go ahead and tell the truth. The law did deal with tithing, but tithing came before the law. Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek before there was a Moses. Jacob said if the God would bless him, he said, surely I will give the tenth unto thee. So those are two examples of how tithing was before the law. Now when the law came, God gave instructions of how to deal with tithing as, as his people as he began to teach them about a lot of things. But tithing was before the law. Then when you come to Matthew, Jesus began to deal with the, with the Pharisees and he, told, he called them hypocrites. He called them hypocrites because he said, you pay tithes of a nice and mint. And he said, but you have omitted the way of your matters. But you know what he said before he said that? These things you ought to do. Jesus said you ought to pay tithes. But at the same time, you can't just pay your tithes and omit the way of your matters. And I said this. I said, I'm not going to argue with anybody on Facebook about whether they ought to pay their tithes. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue to pay my tithes and continue to be blessed thereby. Elder Thomas told us many years ago that you could give your way out of poverty. Did y'all hear me? I'm talking about when you decide, hey, this is not what I want to make. He told us I decided that I wanted to make more than I was making. So you know what he did? He started paying tithes on what he wanted to make. And God would bless him to get there and supersede that. So nobody can bear some things you can't tell me any better. Because I've already experienced it for myself. I've already read in the word for myself. I have already experienced these things. So you can't tell me that. But we need we need discernment in our finances. We need to know, is this the home for me? Is it time for me to buy a home? Is this the car for me? I know the prophet came from New York and told you to go on the lot and lay your hands on the car, but is it time for me to get that car? I need discernment. I can't just go and put my hand on the, on the car because you know what? The people will give it to you, but the people will give it and the people will take it away when you can't make the, power, the payment. So yes, we need discernment in our finances. We need discernment on our jobs. Those things that we have to do, those decisions that we have to do to, in, in, in our daily lives on our jobs. We need God to lead us even on our jobs because you know what I found out? I have found out that even on my job, when I do what God told me to do, he will bless me on my job. He has blessed me on my job. This year, I decided I was going to retire, and I said, I, I, I'm going to come on out. It's just my time. I thought it was my time, but at the same time, I was praying for discernment. I said, Lord, I need you to give me discernment. But I thought about it the other day, and all the way up until April, I was still saying I'm going to retire. Now, keep in mind, I haven't filled out any papers, any retirement papers or any of that, but I was still saying that, still praying, still asking God for discernment. And something happened in April. And I said, you know what, God? You're so strategic. Because if I had never said I was going to retire, you would have never put me in the position that you put me in that showed me what was my next chapter. And he, you know what he told me? He said, not now. I believe the Lord is going to bless me to retire, but he told me, not now. But in the meantime, he would, he would bless me and he would give me a raise, a good raise, and he would bring me out of the classroom. So I thank God for his blessings as far as that is concerned. So yes, we need discernment on our jobs. 
To sum it up, we need discernment in our daily decisions. Now, this is this 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 discernment is so widespread; it, it, would, it would have to be a series. But just allow me to do just a little bit today. To sum it up, we need discernment in our daily decisions. Let's go back to to Samson and see what Samson had going on. Now we know the story of Samson. Samson was a mighty man. Samson was uh, Samson was a mighty man. He was a strong man. You know, for years we thought that Samson was this man with these big strong muscles, and we, you know, that's how they told us on TV. They put him before us with these big strong muscles. But Samson had to be an ordinary man. The reason I say Samson was an ordinary man is because they wondered where his strength lay. You know what is also something about Samson? I'm trying to, 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 to get in a hurry, but let, let, me, let me slow down a minute. Samson had discernment issues. And his biggest discernment issue was with women. You see, Samson would go to his parents and he would tell them, I have the, this woman has caught my eye. This Philistine woman has caught my eye. And I want you to go and see what you can do so she can be my wife. The problem with that is the Philistines were the enemy. Why would you want to go to the enemy's camp to get your wife? So Samson would do, he, 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 would, he had no discernment when it came to women. So his parents told him, no, that we don't think this is a good idea. But you know how it is. Your children keep, keep worrying you. But listen, let me tell you something. No matter how your children worry you, when God gives you the discernment, don't you do what they ask you to do if it's not according to God's will. So Samson would go and marry this woman. And so he would go and they had a four-day marriage feast, four or five-day marriage feast. So Samson gave the men a riddle. He said, I tell y'all what, he told 30 young Philistine men, he said, if you can solve this riddle, then you, I will give each one of you a piece of clothing, an outfit. Let me just put it that way. But if you can't solve it, Every one of y'all got to give me an outfit. So Samson just knew he had put this, he had put this riddle before them, and he just knew they were not going to be able to solve it. But guess what they did? They went to his wife. And they said, you don't get this, this riddle for us. If you don't get the answer to this riddle for us, we're going to kill you and your household. So she would come to Samson. I'm trying to make a long story short. She would come to Samson. She would tell Samson. She said, look. I need you to tell me the answer to this riddle. And after she kept worrying him, Samson gave her the answer to the riddle. So if Samson get, if, if, when Samson gave her the answer to the riddle, she would give it to the Philistines, and they would answer it. So Samson knew. Samson said, if you hadn't been dealing with my wife, you never would have known. Samson knew exactly what happened. If you've been talking to my wife, and she has given you the answer to this riddle. And so they would, he would go and kill some other men so that he could give them what he had promised them. And he did. Now later he would come and he would take revenge on them. And he would, when he went back to try to get his wife, they had given his wife to his best man. Say, Samson, you don't have a wife anymore. She's married to somebody else. So Samson would fight them. He would, he would take foxes, I think it was 300 foxes, and he would put them together. He would tie the, their tails together, set fire to their tails, and then send them out into the village where they would destroy that, that village. And so guess what happened? They ended up killing his wife. Not the foxes, but the men in revenge. They said, we, we, gonna, we about to fix him, we gonna kill his wife. So here we find Samson. His wife has been killed. He is lying with a, a prostitute, and now he has fallen in love with Delilah. Somebody say Delilah. I want to know if you got some Delilahs in your life. See, because I can imagine that Delilah was beautiful. And so when, he, when, when Samson began to go back and he, he wanted to talk to, the, the, to Delilah, he would go back to the text. He would go back and he would stay with Delilah and he still hadn't learned anything. You know, we talked about experience as our best teacher. Now listen, don't get me wrong, there are some things that experience can teach us. I think that God uses some experiences to teach us a lesson. So it's best that we learn from those experiences. 
But if your experience tells you contrary to God's word, then you better lean on God's word. Your primary source for info information is the spirit of God and not your experiences. But if Samson was devoid of anything else, he had the experience that he had just had with his wife who en enticed him and got his secret. And so here we find him again with Delilah. And he was in love with Delilah. But guess what Delilah was in love with? Money. Because they told Delilah, they said, look, if you would just tell us where his secret lies, then we will give you so much money. So here's Delilah, she talks to Samson and she says to him, she said, Samson, uh, where does your strength lie? And Samson would tell her a lie the first time. And then she would try, she would bind him up just with bow strings the first time. And so she would say, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. And so he would come together and he would shake himself and he would break those ropes. Now, look like Samson would learn, but the second time, here we go again. And he says, he comes all the way down again. Samson, where's your strength like? He said, you would do this, then I'll be just like any other man, second time. Then she would come and she would say, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. Samson would shake himself and break free. And here he comes the third time. Now it looked like Samson would get some sense somewhere. Because every time she would tell him the same thing. But this last time she said, Samson, you're making a fool out of me. Don't you know I love you? I can imagine what she said. She probably even cried. You know how sometimes women use tears to, to uh, get into the heart of their their husbands or their, their significant others. I've never done it myself. I, I save my tears for, for real situations. But sometimes, you know, women will cry. I can imagine Delilah crying and telling Samson, please, 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 baby, give me the answer. Where does your strength lie? And so this time, she had worried him so bad until Samson told her he said, if you cut the locks of my hair, that I'll be like any other man. Now, I need you to realize something. Samson's, Samson's um, strength did not lie in his hair, but Samson was a Nazarite. And the Nazarites were not to cut their hair along with a lot of other things, I'm trying to make this story short. So she would come and she would say, oh yeah, I got it this time. I need y'all to be here tonight because I got the real thing this time. So she would have somebody to come to shave the locks of his hair and she would say to him, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. And this time, Samson would get up, he would shake himself as before. But this time, Samson was, was bound. He could not be set free because Delilah had cut his hair. And I want you to know something today. There are some Delilahs in our lives, and I don't mean just women or men, even though there may be some women and men in our lives. But if there happen to be women or men in our lives who are not living according to God's word, they are trying to cut your hair. They're trying to make you lose your anointing. Anytime you, listen, we're talking about discernment, is that right? First of all, Samson never should have married uh, the enemy. The Bible tells us that we are to be are not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So when we get somebody who is not a believer, you have not used good ju good judgment. You have not been discerning because the Bible has already told you. You don't have to discern the things that the Bible has already told you, but you do have to read them. We got to know what it says. So when we make bad choices and we do those things, we, we lack discernment or we don't do those things that help us to discern what God will is for our life, we end up just like Samson. Samson lost the anointing because he, he made bad choices. He lacked discernment. So here he is. Delilah has had him, his hair cut off and now Samson is blind. Let me tell y'all something. We talked about the game of life. Is that right? I want every one of you to realize you are playing in the game of life. 
The difference is the, you either win or lose your soul. The Bible said, what will a man be profited if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Yes, she is beautiful. Yes, he looks good. But if you lose your soul, what, what you going to do when you lose your soul? If you close your eyes in physical death and you have not given your life to God, that good looking man or that good looking woman will do you no good. That money that you stole, that you embezzled from your company, it will do you no good. Because, see, we talked about the fact that we need discernment, not just for our choice of who we're going to be with, our choice of who we're going to marry, but we need discernment when it comes down to what we need to do on our jobs, what we need to do in our families. Our children's lives depend on it. Parents, let me talk to you for a minute. Because we need to know something. I am responsible for the spiritual choices of my child as long as they're in my house, as long as they're children. So listen, don't let your children tell you whether they want to come to church or not. Did y'all hear me? Just as sure as we don't let them tell us whether they want to come to school or not, we, have, we should not let them tell us whether we want to come, they want to come to church or not. We need to be leaders in our own houses. Fathers, you need to be the prophet. You need to tell your wife and your children what thus said the Lord. And you need to be the priest. The priest who goes to God for your children and your wife. Women, you need to be, you, the, the saying says, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. You need to use your strong hand to help your children in this maneuver in this way. You be their discernment until they get saved. You need to tell your children, listen, you need to do this or you don't need to do that. You need to be able to use those things that God has taught you through your, your failures. Your shortcomings, those things, and you need to tell your children, this is not the way you need to go, baby girl. This is not the way you need to go, baby boy. Because if we would put them in the right place, which is in the church, the Bible says that we should forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. That means you need to come to church. And so when you come to church, you need to bring your children to church with you. You need to put them in a position to be fed spiritually. Because if you don't, and I want y'all to write this down, if you don't make sure that you have done everything that you can to bring your children in the fear and admonition of God, God will hold you accountable. Not only will God hold you accountable, but guess who else will? Your children will. Because if you don't get the fear of God in your children, they're going to bring you to your knees one way or the other. They're going to do some things that you wish they had never done. They're going to say some things. They're going to experience some things that will bring you to your knees. So we need to teach our children how to call on God. We need to teach our children how to depend on God. I'll never forget the story where the girl said that she had gone into the car. She trusted the man after all. He was from the church. So she would get a ride home, and when she would get, he, wouldn't he didn't take her home. He took her to his own. And he said, I just need to stop by here for one minute. And so he would get out and he would say, come on, go in with me. And she trusted him. And so she would get out of the car and she would go in with him. And so when she went in with him, she noticed that nobody was there. And he proceeded to take advantage of this girl. He proceeded to rape this young girl. But God gave her the presence of mind because she was saved. You know what that young girl told him? She said, I stopped struggling. And I looked him in his eye and I said, the Lord rebuke you. She said, I'm going to tell everybody at the church what you did. She said, I'm going to tell everybody what you did. And she said, that man, I'm not talking about a story that I read. I'm talking about a testimony that somebody gave me. She said, that man stopped in his tracks and he broke down into tears as he apologized to her. But the Lord told her, to stop what she was doing and to speak to that spirit that was dealing with him. We need to put our children in a position so that they know who Jesus is. They know how to call on him. They know what to do in a certain situation when I don't know what to do. I know who to call on. That's the kind of life that we need to live before our children. That's the kind of way we need to put our children in, in, in the way so they would know exactly what to do. Listen, we need discernment and I've been up long enough. 
We need discernment for our daily lives. If the pastor lets me come again, maybe I can do part two. But we need discernment, people. Every day we need to be praying and asking God that he would give us discernment for daily living. See, Lord, I don't want to make a decision without consulting you. I don't want to make, I need to know what your will is for my life. I need to know what it is you want me to do, what it is you want me to say. Every day I say, Lord, I want you to make me aware of the people who come into my presence on a daily basis that you have given me as an assignment. You see, somebody's going to come across your tracks, and that's the person that God has strategically put in your way so that you can tell them what thus said the Lord, so that you can encourage them, so that you can inspire them. But too many times we're caught up in our own stuff, we're caught up in our own mess, and we miss the assignment, we fail the assignment. God has placed you where you are, where you work, to be a blessing to the people on your job. Did y'all hear me? God has placed you in your family to be a blessing to your family. God has strategically placed you where you are. And he has given you assignments. Sometimes he gives us daily assignments. But we're too busy caught up in our own issues to fulfill the assignment. So I came today to say we need to pray that God will give us Discernment for our daily decisions. Come on, stand where you are. Some of us know today that we've been lacking in discernment. We haven't been seeking God. The scripture said, if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your paths. But the problem is, we haven't been seeking him. We haven't. He has been directing us because we haven't been seeking him. I want to give you five quick things, and I just want to go over them, ways that we can uh, seek God for discernment, or five things that we can do, five keys to discerning well. Number one, check your word level. How much are you reading God's word? You see, the more we read God's word, the better our discernment becomes. Because we know what it is God has said in his word. We know what it is God has required of us. So level up on God's word. Get in his word if you really want good discernment. Number two, check your atmosphere. Who are you hanging around? Who are you calling your friend, your sister, your brother? If some, you're with somebody who is telling you to do things contrary to God's word, you, are in, you, you need to check your atmosphere. What kind of music are you listening to? What kind of movies are you watching? See, these are the things that we need to pay attention to because they create our atmosphere. Number three, check your emotional hygiene. What do you mean by that? I mean, so, sometimes our emotions, if we're not careful, our emotions can get the best of us and they will rob us of discernment. Listen, we need to number one, we need, or let me say A so you won't get confused about my numbers. But A, we need to acknowledge our emotions. Okay, this is love. This is fear. I know that this is, I'm this anxious. I'm worried about something. We need to acknowledge that those are emotions. Whenever I'm going through something, I acknowledge that this is the emotion. And then B, I need to make sure I'm not led by that emotion. I will not be led by fear. I will not be led by worry. I would not let that dictate what it is I need to do. So yes, we are emotional creatures, but we can't let them dictate what it is we need to do. Number four, guard your access point. Who has access to you? Who are you allowing to have access to you? Because when you let the wrong people have access to you, you are crippling your discernment. Because you allow your friends to tell you what to do rather than God to tell you what to do. So you need to check the people who have access to you. And then number five, you need to get in God's presence. Listen, we need to get in his presence. In his presence is fullness of joy. That's why some of us are so depressed. That's why some of us have no direction. That's why some of us can't hardly make it. 
Because we are not spending time in his presence. So if you truly want to discern well, we need to take this recipe. But even as we stand there today, I'm going to ask Elder Green if he will come. And the first step is, you know you haven't been discerning well if you haven't given God your life. But and if you are saved, we are going to pray and ask God to give us better discernment. Teach us how to discern well. The scripture says that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to be in his perfect will. Come on, Elder Green, if you will lead us through. I come looking, I, Lord, I heard the word today, I heard the message on today, and Lord, that's me. Lord, I am standing in the need of a blessing. I need, amen, Lord, to better understand. I need to discern better, Lord. And all, after your message has come forth today, Lord, you found me, Lord, standing right in your will today. Lord, I need you today. I don't know if you're here today, but you need the Lord today. Amen. Lord God, let us just pray. Let us look away to the most gracious Father. Here we are today, Lord. We ask that you would look on us today, Lord. We've heard your word today, Lord. We've heard your word today, Lord. We want to be doers of the word, Lord. Help us to better understand, Lord. Help guide us today, Lord. In the name of Jesus and your manservant, Lord, we know that many have fallen and gone astray, Lord. But, oh, God, we heard the words, amen, as she delivered them on today about our brother Samson today, Lord. Made some unwise decision. Lord, we want you today, right where we're standing, to help us, Lord, to make better decisions, Lord. Help us to make better decisions about our, about our lives, about our loved ones today, Lord. And, Lord, here we are, we're standing, Lord. Well, some are standing in the gap for our loved ones today, Lord. We need a blessing today. We need healing. We need deliverance. But most of all, Lord, we need better understanding. Help us today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, we know that you can and we know that you will. And as we look at all this audience on today, Lord, we need you to look on every road today, Lord. Look on our neighbors today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Help us to understand, Lord. Give us guidance. Oh, God, lead us on the right path today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, we know you didn't bring us this far to leave us. So we're praying, dear Lord, for everyone, Lord, in every row today, Lord. In row number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten. Even on my left side, even on my right side today, Lord. We want you to come in today, Lord. Go in our home today, Lord. Walk, walk us today, Lord. Walk us through today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, that's done like you know well. We need a special blessing today, Lord. Bless, bless us today, Lord. Bless, bless our home. Bless our lives today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. But most of all, Lord, protect us, Lord. Give us good understanding. Give us guiding. Lead us today, Lord, in your way and in your will today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. 
And Lord God, we pray that these words that are going forth today have not fallen on deaf ears. Lord, that he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church on today. Lord God, we're thanking you today, Lord. Now, there's some that may have a special blessing, a special prayer request. If you have a special prayer request, we want you to lift both hands right while you're standing. You don't need to move to the aisles on the day, but I have a special prayer request. Oh, we see hands all over the building right now. Have a special prayer request. Lord God, for those that have special prayer requests, there's somebody that may be sick in their bodies today. We want you to just raise your hands today. We're going to pray for you today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Those that are standing in the need of something one else in your family today. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we ask a special blessing for those that have raised their hand and acknowledged, Lord, I need you, Lord. There's much I can do, Lord, but I can't do it without you. Send on your help today, Lord. Send on your anointing today. Hey, in the name of Jesus, move in a special way today, Lord. Bless those that are standing today, Lord. Those with their hand lifted. Bless their household. Bless their home, Lord. In a special way. In the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we'll be careful to give you the glory. All the honor and praise. We ask it in Jesus' name. Let us all say thank God. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Give them all the praise today. You can have your seats. Thank you, Lord. We say to thank God for the message on today. We thank God not only for the message, we thank God for the messenger, amen, just walking us through the various steps, amen, to discern it. God bless you on today, missionary. Thank God for you today. And we're not going to hold you much longer, amen. We're going to call for the announcement uh, on today. And I want to take a moment to thank God for all of our visitors. If we have any visitors today, just raise your hand. Amen. We certainly thank God for this couple here on today. Amen. God bless you. We're so excited for you coming out on today and finding you in the house of prayer. We certainly thank God that, amen, for bringing you here. And we know that the Lord's going to take you back to your destination safe and sound. So, amen. Before you leave, you can give your name, if you would, amen, to our ushers, amen. We would follow up with you. But God bless you on today. And thank you so much for, amen, being here on today. Give them a big round of applause. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You'll have the announcement at this time. And after the announcement, praise God. Amen. The ushers will come. Amen. For our tithes and offering. And then we'll dismiss. Amen. God bless you. All right. Good morning. Morning. All right. We don't have any special announcements, but keep uh, digging laws and mothers and fathers in prayer. Amen. Amen. Keep them in prayer. And also this week we're back on regular schedule. Uh, Tuesday prayer and prayer and youth battle study. Wednesday prayer 5:30 uh, and adult battle start following. And Thursday 5:30 prayer. Thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot to get this announcement to her. This week or uh, for this week, youth battle study we will not have on Tuesday night. The young people are going to meet me out here on Wednesday at 5:30 along with the adults. We're going to be in the back. We're going to continue with our session, our abstinence session. I think this is session six. So our young people are going to meet me here. They're free to meet me here on Wednesday night so that we can go ahead and close out our abstinence program on Sunday. Also, is Jerome Gore here? Praise God. I'm glad to see you today. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We're going to have the ushers to come at this time. My show something very softly. Amen. The usher is coming at this time. Just raise your hand if you have an offering. Amen. We know many are giving. Amen. By Givelify and other methods here to the church. But amen. God bless you. Just raise your hand and we'll come and we will serve you. Amen. I see hands all over the building. Amen. God bless you. Many are giving. Yes. And, and for our visitors, our special visitors on the day, just before you leave, if you don't mind coming up, uh, I'd like to shake your hand. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. We certainly enjoyed you on today and just being out with us. Amen. We're giving. This is the time of giving. Amen. Uh, we're not dismissed yet. We're not dismissed yet. All right. They all. Oh, 
How many of you want to praise the thing? still sitting. Amen. God bless you. Everybody got up in a rush now. Hallelujah. God bless you on today. We say thank God again for the message on today. What a word from the Lord. Amen. I know many of you are getting ready, amen, to go out and dine and what have you. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless you until we see you as the next appointed time. Amen. Let us look away to the Lord. Most gracious Father, we thank you today, Lord, for all that our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you for the word, we thank you for the message and the messenger. And oh God, if we're prepared to go down from this place, we realize we need not your presence. Keep an anchor camping around us, Lord, and return us all at the next appointed time. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let us all say thank God. Amen. And amen. amen. When I say to one, I say to all. Watch and pray. This time you're dismissed. God bless you.